Good shot. Right there. Yep. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I didn't see that coming, boy. You test drive a car before you buy it, right? Or at least know how they're going to behave and what they're going to do underwater. Crank One of the biggest problems with bait shopping is you really don't know how the bait's going to behave when you buy it. Are you going to like it? Are the fish going to like it where you're at? Like, what are the features? What are the aspects? Like, you don't exactly get, like, the clearest picture of what it's going to do and how it's going to do it in the water. You get a general idea but it's never exactly how it behaves. So here's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna break down multiple deep diving crankbaits, a variety of brands, a variety of styles, but they're all kind of geared towards that extra deep bite, that bite that we actually slaughtered those big bass on last year, fishing out deep that we caught up like the 49 pounds on. Crankbaits that go like 15 plus feet, all the way down to like 25, 26 feet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the real features of these crankbaits. Not just like, oh, well it's a deep diver. It goes deep and has a nice tight wobble. No. This is gonna be more like a buyer's guide. I'm gonna tell you raw, like consumer reports, straight up, like what I think the features of these certain baits are, how they perform, how they compare to the others, what one's good for, what another one's good for, and overall kind of like rating on them. Guys, if you like when I talk about these, make sure you like and subscribe. We're gonna get into the video in a minute, but you can find everything in the video at Tackle Warehouse, as well as the cool garb at Bass Attitude Fishing. Enough about that, let's talk crankbaits. Nice. Whoa, let that go. Alright guys, we're going to go through these crankbaits in no particular order. Basically, what I'm going to try to do is just break down the features and some basic stuff because honestly, you go into a store, you look at stuff on the shelf, you're like, I think that'll work, but you really don't know how it's going to behave on the water. I'm going to try to lay out some of those features so you can be a more educated buyer when you go in there and actually get what you want. Well, yeah, I got this one in my hand. This is a Lucky Craft 6.5. It's the Magnum crankbait, like the Skeet Reese that dives super deep. So, things about this thing. Comes with pretty decent hooks. They're pretty stout, pretty solid. Um, the bill. So what I notice with this one is it is kind of like a mushier kind of bait. It has a wider wobble, ironically, but it has kind of a mushy kind of return to it. It's kind of a whoa, 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 whoa. It's not that tight kind of like kind of feel that you get from like a 10XD or 6XD. It has a mushier, wider wobble, probably good for warmer water. I also notice with this, with this thing too, it's supposed to dive like equivalent to a 10XD, like super deep, like 25 foot in that, uh-uh. It does not dive that deep. I think you can get it to like 18, 19, but this thing is not going like ultra super deep crankbait. It's a gigantic crankbait, but it's not going as deep as some of those super deep divers. We're actually gonna feature two of these. This is the Six Sense Crush. This is like the 25 foot diver. This one is pretty awesome. It comes standard with the triple grip hooks, which you cannot beat super duper feature because you always end up switching them out in that. This one compared to the other one we're gonna talk about has a rattle. Here's the nice things with this. Basically, it dives deep super fast. What does that mean? When I cast this thing out and start cranking it down, it gets to the bottom faster than any of the other like large magnum crankbaits that I've found. It really dives straight down, and I think that's partially because of the way they have the bill cupped just like that. Gets down quick. This bait has a super tight, super hard vibration, like a very, very, got spiders on me. Very, very like tight vibration as it goes down. It really digs. It's great for digging on shell. Caught some giants on this. Only problem with this thing is the following. It has one of those like balls for casting in it. So half the time you can sling it, like wing it, sling it, but half the time she'll end up like spinning in the air when you cast it out, which leads to shorter casts, which with these kinds of super deep and deep diving crankbaits, you wanna make the longest cast possible. So this thing has some great features. Shortcoming is castability. If you, if you get a weird wind and get a slice, it's kinda of weird. But you're gonna to wanna to use this when you got fish that, that are reacting to a super tight, super hard wobble, like a and when you need to get down super quick. This is almost the same bait. This is the Cloud 9. It's kind of like the Crush, but basically it, it's the same features of the bait that I just showed you, but silent. There's no rattle in it. 
This thing is absolutely killer when you get pressured fish. I do have slightly the same problem with it with spinning casts when you throw it out, but you're still getting that super quick dive down. I'm talking, dude, it like, it goes straight down and she digs. When you need to dig that shell and you need to get on that bar, this thing does it. The silent feature is also something that you can't find. I wish they made a 10XD like that, but you can't find it a lot in these giant crankbaits, so it's a nice option to have. This right here is the Dual Reales G87. So once again, an extra deep or a deep diving crankbait. There's two versions of this. Interesting with the Dual Reales is the two versions, one dives say like 15 to 19, the other dives to like 20, 25. They have the same body size. So this bait simply changes the bill size to get down to where it goes. This is exactly what I would call a finesse crankbait. This is a kind of subtle, different kind of wobble. And a lot of that has to do with the body shape as well as that, that bill. You'll notice Notice that it's that oval -esque kind of kind of bill like an ellipsis almost it creates a very tight wobble and a very like a very subtle like shimmy to it when you're actually cranking it you can feel like a clear difference between cranking this and say 6xd or that that crush that um that six cents there, there's definitely a more subtle return from the bait as you're cranking but you still get that that return and you're still getting pretty like deep resonance when you switch between the two the you know the 15 to 19 as well as the 25 but it's a great bait to go to when you have fish that aren't like super they're active but they're kind of like spooky i i don't know how to put it. like you don't want that that giant grindy grindy like really jigga, jigga, jigga. this puts off like a more subtle vibration and i think that's why it's key to like a little more finesse cranking super great features comes with solid hooks gets down pretty like quick it's not as fast as that crush that's the only kind of downside because that bill although it's long it doesn't dig as quick but overall great finesse cranking so we got the Spro Little John. This is the super deep diver. I also have the standard Little Johns right here. Coolest feature about this bait is body profile. It's a flat sided crankbait, which is awesome when the fish are kind of being weird. You know, it's almost like fishing a trap in a crankbait. So here's the only downside that I've noticed with these baits. The problem I've run into is the majority of them run true and they'll run true for a while but then when they go untrue, and what I'm talking about with untrue is basically you want this bait to dive down straight. If I casted it directly from where your eyes, you know, point of eyesight is, directly here, it should go straight down and come straight back to you. So these things kind of like roll and go to the side. Usually you can adjust this eyelet right here to make these baits run true afterwards. I have struggled with it and they end up just rolling. So that's the only downside. I get bites though on this bait, like when I can't get them on a 6XD, 10XD, like when I need a different presentation, we've talked about it in the past, but that different vibration. This, because of the flat sides, gives a clearly different vibration to those fish and a different feedback to their lateral line. And I truly believe that. It also has kind of a different bill. It's that flat sided bill. It's perfect for digging on like shell and that without getting hung up, even if you have some obstructions on the bottom it's going to kind of square bill right over it and roll over it but the biggest key with this is the flat sides i will warn you though i've had problems with them not running true out of the pack as well as they, they go untrue and i can't true them and i don't know if that's my fault or if there's like an, a greater issue with the bait come with pretty stout hooks you don't really need to change them out but i do still usually change them out not on this guy but on the smaller one to the triple grips but a solid bait and even though they go untrue you need them in your tackle box if you're going to be doing deep cranking because it is a very different presentation than all the others so this is the one that i'm going to show you that is not at tackle warehouse at least yet from what i understand so this is the z boss this was designed by randy haynes an ultimate ledge master up there on the tva really known on pickwick gunnersville you know whenever it's ledge fishing randy is a player kentucky lake so here's the key with this guy he has two different baits this is the ultra deep diver i think it's the 25 the z boss 25 you'll notice the head is super flat on this thing and then it has that long bill there's a slight concave in the bill this thing is very unique and here's why it gives you that that wide kind of hard tight wobble that you get from a 10xd however because of the cupped kind of like concave on the bill right there it gets down faster than a 10xd and ironically because of this flatter head and the way they design the body it doesn't crank as hard as a 10xd and what do i mean by that basically when you throw this out i could throw this on a rod that i would throw like a 6xd and i'm not going to but I can throw it on a lighter rod because it's not like that bulldoze kind of like drag feel that you get from, from some of these other extra deep crankbaits. Now I know a lot of guys on ledges swear by this. I've thrown it quite a bit. 
I haven't had a super duper amount of success with it. I've always kind of leaned back on the 10 XD in that, but it definitely is a different presentation. We talked about with that Spro Little John, how it has the different body shape. This flat head on here creates a different vibration and a different resonance under the water. Once again, it's something you need to have in your tackle box because sometimes just switching up those crankbaits, whether you're on ledge fish, whether you're on like a small pot of fish that are kind of down deep on some kind of isolated structure, having those different vibrations, I'm a true believer is key to triggering those fish. This is a Rapala DT-16. So I was kind of jaded with Rapala back in the day because they didn't, they didn't seem to modernize their lures or kind of like, I don't know, just bring them to like the, the normal forefront. But they also always had like a subtlety and a sort of finesse aspect that, that you couldn't find in your standard plastic lures and things along those lines. So this, this DT-16, dude, this thing is the ultimate get bit by giants using a finesse soft running crankbait. When I was doing quite a bit of long lining, this thing was my go-to, dude. I would see fish on the graph, I could not catch them with a 6XD, could not. Like they, I'd bonk them, I'd feel them, every once in a while I'd catch like a couple, but on those real tough finicky schools when I was long lining, this guy did some work. It has a very unique body shape. It's kind of like that shad, almost like a teardrop body shape. Very rounded edges too, making for a very subtle water displacement. You know, this isn't something you're gonna throw in like super dirty, nasty water, um, but in your, your clear waters, four or five foot, three foot visibility, this thing is the ultimate finesse crankbait. The bill once again has that concave, does not dive as fast or as hard as the 10XD, it all, or, I'm sorry, 6XD. It also weighs less, so it's harder to cast. Perfect bait for long lining, but if you do have a softer rod, you can also sling it quite a ways. There's a decent weight to it. Um, I did change out the hooks to the triple grips, but I'm telling you, if you have fish that you can see that are like 6XD candidate fish, the profile, the water displacement, and the feedback that you get from this this DT16, like this thing is, is the deal. If you can't get them to bite on a crankbait, but they seem like crankbait fish, Rapala DT16. The, the vibration, the dive, it, it triggers fish that you can't get to bite on your other more like standardized kind of cranks. I mean, do I even need to say what these are? I, guys, I'm gonna kind of blaze through this one because we've done so many videos on these baits. In my hands right now, I have a Striking 8XD and then also a 10XD. I have 6XDs, I have 6XD Silence, I have 472 10XDs in a variety of different colors. I got a bunch of 8XDs. These are the standards in deep cranking. I don't, I don't care what else works or what else throws. Like this is where I start almost all the time. The great features, especially about these two baits or actually the whole like 6XD, 10XD, 8XD series, they get down fast. They give you a strong report on, on the rod. They're gonna vibrate. They're also super castable. The one thing that I've really noticed across the board, even with some of the tungsten tr tungsten transfer baits, so that means they got a ball and they go back and forth when you cast them, it's supposed to be able to let you like throw them farther. It, they don't always cast right or they end up spinning. That's not to say these baits don't spin from time to time when you cast them, but overall 6XDs, 10XDs especially, as well as the 8XD, they cast clean, dude, when you make a clean like follow through cast. They have great vibration, a million different colors, and they just report, like they, you can feel the bottom. I, I, I love the 10XD especially. Like it gives you a report on the bottom that I've never really felt from a, a, like equivalent on any other ultra deep diving crankbait. There's just something to it. And the thing is day in and day out, even if they've seen it, they still freaking bite it. Like it's one of those things. Hooks wise, I leave the hooks on the 8XD and the 10XD that come standard. I know that might seem kind of stupid, but I've never actually had a problem with them not hooking fish. Like when they eat these two baits, they chomp them. Now on the 6XD, I will put the triple grips because I have had those hooks either open up, bend out, just I've had issues with them, dude. But on the bigger stuff where they put the little souter trebles, Dude, these dive down, they get to where they need to be, you get a tighter wobble, and it's a great place to start whenever you're like cranking ultra deep. Well guys, I hope that helped you out. My goal really was to kind of give you more of an in-depth breakdown how that lure is gonna behave when you actually get it out of the water and use it and put it into practice. Obviously today it's blowing like hell so we can't even get out because it looks like an ocean out on the lake right now. But using some of those factors, like I, that's how I analyze crankbaits. You know, I think about how fast are they gonna dive down? What kind of wobble do they offer? You know, what's the profile on the, on the body? How is it going to displace water and, and kind of communicate with that lateral line on the fish? Because I think those are some 
the keys with efficiency with fishing them as well as getting bit with the fish. So I hope this kind of buyer's guide for crankbaits has helped you out as we blow around in this crazy weather. But I'm gonna get some knots tied up. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys any got any other like comments on the crankbaits or any other kind of insights, definitely share them with like guys commenting and watching the video below. It's always good to see comments that, that kind of forward our knowledge and forward things that we're learning about fishing. As well as if you guys like recommend some crankbaits for me to take a look at and try things that I didn't mention in the video that maybe I haven't taken a look at, you know, hit me up, let me know, shoot them in the comments box, let me know some things I should be looking at because I love deep cranking. You guys have seen how much I, I really enjoy that and catch some giants out there doing it. So I love more information. I love to learn, especially from you guys because I to try to share my experience with, with you and try to kind of help you grow what you're doing and you guys help me grow what I'm doing. So tight lines, we're checking out for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. We are out until we do some more fishing. Peace. Yeah.